incredibly important. I wouldn't be me without it, number one. But number two, I used to argue with Bruce Lee a lot. He didn't believe in point karate, for example. Thought it was silly. He believed in full contact. Not that he did either one. But I said, look, Bruce, there would never be a Chuck Norris, a Pat Burleson, a Jim Harrison, a Bob Wall without traditional martial arts. Because first of all, we got some skill set without going in there. I wouldn't have had the guts to box. Years later, I boxed because then I understood about getting hit. But I was scared of pain and afraid to get hit. So I learned how to deal with pain. Traditional martial arts gave me respect, taught me respect for all martial arts. It's been said many times by people wiser than me that there is no bad martial arts system, only bad teachers or poor teachers. So for me, I've studied I'm a black belts in many traditional styles, okay? Starting with judo and then going to Gene LaBelle's MMA, which wasn't called that in those days. He, he you know, it was, he called it pretty much judo, but <laughs> it was anything but judo. He boxed, he did jujitsu, he did everything. He wrestled with professional wrestlers and so on. Became world heavyweight wrestling champ. But he said, Bob, go train in everything. So I did. I trained in Thai boxing. I trained in American boxing. I trained, I made a black belt in Shorinru. The certificate signed by Izo Shimabuku, uh, the founder of that system. I made black belt in Taekwondo. Certificate signed by General Che, founder of Taekwondo, and so on and so forth. So each level of traditional martial arts taught me to be a better martial artist, a more complete martial artist, to steal from this and rob from that and use what was good and trash what wasn't. But more importantly, I learned to give respect. I learned to bow. I think it's very important. With, without respect in life, you need your children to respect you, but you need to respect them back. We need to respect our flag, our country, our customs. You know, I get real irritated about people who don't respect this great country. And, and violently protest and burn flags and things, I'll willingly kick their ass anytime. The bottom line is traditional martial arts made me who I am. I think it's incredibly important. I feel sorry for those MMA people who skip their traditional training because you need to go do that traditional training first. It'll give you skill sets you will never get anywhere else. It'll give you respect and 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 a proper instructor is going to make sure and educate you about character development. Chuck Norris and I built the largest chain of martial arts schools in the world. We never trade a, promoted anybody to black belt unless we believe they had good character. We're not going to promote a pedophile. We're not going to promote a murderer. We're not going to promote a drug dealer. You need to be a person of good character. That's very important. You need to give respect and receive it. You get that from traditional martial arts, which I feel, as much as I love MMA, I don't see that grounding, but you can take, say, the great George St. Pierre started in traditional martial arts and look at the respect. One of the greatest fighters, if not the greatest MMA fighters, very kind, respectful man like Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. That's character. That's, that's just something that you can't buy. And what? People fall in love with a person of character, a kind person, a person who wants to do kind, not evil. Well, it would be a completely different person. It would be a disaster. It would be a nightmare because I was a very insecure kid. I had an alcoholic father who was very abusive. And I desperately needed the confidence that martial arts training gave me. I needed to be to meet the men and women that taught me that I could admire because of their martial arts skills. Um, I, I really, all I can say is only word I can think of without martial arts training in my life would have been a nightmare. was very dramatic and where I was, I was with Freddie Weintraub and we were shooting a film called Black Belt Jones starring Jim Kelly. And we were in the west side on a university and uh, a campus. We were shooting scenes. That particular day we were shooting a bear jumps out at Jim Kelly and he's got to beat the bear up. And so Freddie and I got a call, I said Linda Lee's calling from Hong Kong. So we ran to the phone and Freddie got there first, Freddie took the call. And he turned around, he said, Bruce died. And I'm going, there's no way. It, it, it was like a thunderbolt. But I started thinking, because he's talking to Linda, I'm not. I'm just hearing his part of the conversation. And I thought, car accident, he got killed. He was the worst driver in the world. You drive with Bruce Lee, and here's Bruce, 
And here you are. Here's Bruce. <laughs> Every time I drove with him, I had to shove his face back. Look out there. They're going to kill us. He was a horrible driver. So my first flash was he, he drove off a cliff. He hit a bus. He was looking at his passenger. And uh, so that was what I thought first. But then it was like, it's a thunderbolt. You know, it's like, it, it's not believable. I love Bruce Lee. I love him then, and 43 years later, I still love him. He was a special human on this earth. He was a great man. Not only a great martial artist, he was bright, intellectual, one-eighth German, well-read, kind, magician, charismatic. I mean, what can you say about him? There was just a brilliant philosopher. Uh, it was just an amazing gift. When I do my Bruce Lee seminars, I say, you know, yes, we lost Bruce Lee at 32. We lost Freddie Prince at 22. We lost Elvis at 42. We lost Steve McQueen at 50. So it's clear, clear that God takes warriors when he needs them. And it doesn't matter how famous you are, rich you are, tough you are, you're going when God needs you. He, he needs you, you're going. So we lost those four brilliant talents, all handsome, all wealthy, all famous, all wonderful men. I mean, the loss of Elvis, the loss of, of Freddie Prince, Bruce Lee, um, Steve McQueen, whom I loved and adored, and trained him for quite a while. They were all good men. So Bruce Lee's loss was devastating to me. James Coburn, Steve McQueen, Chuck Norris, and I flew to the funeral. There were two funerals. They had one in Hong Kong, but then he was flown back to Seattle where his wife Linda wanted him buried. And so we flew up together. And it was the most amazing funeral. It set the precedence. I give Linda credit because I thought I knew Bruce better than anybody alive. Well, I found out from the funeral, I didn't know Diddley. She had 10 people come up and speak about him. And the first one was Taki Kimura, Japanese, Bruce's closest friend at that point in his life. And Taki came up and everybody was in tears. I think there was only one speaker that wasn't in tears, but they played blood, sweat and tears. And then Taki came up. Then after he spoke about what Bruce meant to him being a Japanese whose family was put in an internment camp and Japanese hate Chinese, Bruce would have none of that crap because he was one eighth German, seven eighth Chinese. So he, like any minority, had felt the sting of being a minority, ostracized because he was Eurasian. He didn't look Eurasian, handsome guy, but very, very important to him that he give. This is the best in a human when you're kind when you want to give kind and not problems to people, you want to give them laughter, you want to give them success, you want to make them feel better about themselves. That's the real mission. Bruce Lee did that. And so it was devastating then, it's devastating now. I miss him so much, I would give anything to have him come back and be able to spend an hour with him. He was that brilliant. It was that amazing. I'm sure his family would love to have him back, but no, it devastated me then, it devastated me now. The only way I've been able to deal with it is to say, thank God we had Bruce Lee for 32 years. Thank God I got to know him 11 years of his life. Thank God I got to do his last three films. Thank God I had signed to do his sixth film. I was going to pay a detective. Bruce was going to be a big drug uh, cop and world cop. And I'm going to come over from America. And I said, well, do I beat Bruce Lee's character up? No. Uh, does Bruce Lee kill me? No, someone else is going to kill you this time. <laughs> You've been killed by me enough. So, yes, I miss him a lot. I, I, I have to focus on the times we had together, the 11 years of training together, all the fun times when I made him a 300-pound bag, came in to kick it and fell down, took it up to his garage, and, and, and it caved their garage in. <laughs> Just the first time I kicked it, bam! <laughs> The whole garage, Linda comes out, she's cooking, she looks up and she sees Sky through her garage. What have you done? <laughs> that 300 pound bag went outside after that. But anyway, so many fun experiences. I remind myself, it's important to appreciate what we have and not what we don't have. To be thankful for every day and every friend because every, all of us have enemies. I have people who don't like me and I'm happy about it. I really enjoy my enemies. I want there to be people who don't like me because that gives me energy to be better, not be like those clowns. So I just think I've got a million stories with Bruce. I remember so many things I could go on. I could do stories about Bruce Lee for the next 10 years and not stop. Bread and water, maybe. So 
I focus on what I say and I do my Bruce Lee seminars. Look, you all love Bruce Lee because he was the first person to marry ballet and martial arts with charisma. And he was the master of putting emotional content in the film, i.e. when he's about to kill my character, O'Hara, and he goes up in the air. He put emotional content in scenes that nobody could. And, and you can just go through the emotional content scenes that he put in. If it's the mirror scenes, if it's ripping the hair off of Chuck Norris, if it's laying the black belt on Chuck Norris, the respect, because he truly loved Chuck more than any other martial artist alive, and he should. Chuck Norris is a great man. But start thinking about the emotional content in the, all of Bruce Lee's movies, and you'll be blown away. You could do a movie about the emotional content that Bruce Lee got in. Chinese, no Chinese or dogs allowed. If you just start thinking about it, it really affects you when you think about it. So I focus on the great times we had, the many laughs, the many vicious training sessions, him teaching me the string line. So that's what I focus on. I have my memories. He's not dead to me. The world has his films. They have that history, that film. So we have to focus on, and that's what I tell people. Thank God we had Bruce Lee for 30 years. Thank God we had Elvis for 42 years. Thank God we had Steve McQueen for 50 years. Thank God we had Freddie Prince for 22 years. Focus on what we have. And what we have, thank God, films, books, and memories. And that's what I focus on. First of all, I'm talking to you, young people. I believe, and Chuck Norris and I believe, that martial arts should be taught in every school, from grammar school on, because Francois Finlaw once said, a man at peace with himself, and he meant man or woman, a person at peace with himself is at peace with the world. So you get confidence. When Chuck and I, we were the first people to teach women and children in our, our schools, and we felt women and children needed it more than men. And so we had huge success because of it. The fact is we watched every single kid that ever came and trained with us, if they stuck with it, is they got confident. They felt better about themselves. They got better homework. They did better at school. We always trained them. We said, look, you got to be respectful of your parents. Don't ever let us hear your, your mother, father come to us and you beat up your sister or your little brother because then we're going to beat you up and we're going to enjoy it. We really enjoy beating you up. So we try to get the point across. Martial arts is a gift that is irreplaceable. Every parent should give their kids the martial arts because it's not just a clout learning how to fight. It's really learning how to defend yourself, but honing your character through blood, sweat, and tears. The hard training makes you a better person because we're all God's children. I mean, this crap we have about race is ridiculous because if you believe in Adam and Eve, we all came from the same couple. So some are a little darker, some are a little lighter, some are a little yellow. I mean, we're all God's children. So you learn that in the martial arts. And I think you learn how to resolve issues, maybe even violent issues, abuse issues. You learn to deal with it and you learn that there's bad people in the world, but there's way more good people. There's way more great people. I mean, some of our greatest people are our teachers, our police, our firemen. I mean, it just goes on and on and on with great people. But we learn to respect everybody else and we should learn how to have civil discourse. I should be able to discuss with any nationality their opinions on race. I should be able to discuss religion. How many times do you hear, oh, don't study politics, don't discuss politics or religion? No, we need to discuss it. We need to learn something. Because if we, we agree on everything, one of us is unnecessary. I don't want it to be me. So if you go to martial arts training, you're going to learn to resolve issues. You're going to feel better about yourself. Your grades are going to improve. Your attitudes are going to improve. You'll learn to set goals, like going from white to yellow, from yellow to blue, from blue to green, from green to whatever. Ultimate, maybe ultimately a black belt. When you find out that only one in a thousand nationally that start martial arts go from white belt to black belt. That's an amazing journey. It's an amazing gift if you persevere. I became a very successful businessman because of my martial arts training. So Chuck Norris, to prove the point, has right now got a program. He started many, many years ago, well over 20 years ago now, in Texas. 
and he called it Kick Drugs Out of America because he and I both know that dope is for dopes. Nobody with any a lick of luck or wisdom that's been properly trained by their parents will ever go use dro dope. And once they do, they can ruin their whole lives if they're very, very lucky to get out of that quicksand because it's a one-way trip to hell. But you learn to stay away from drugs. You learn to get high on life. To me, it's like you can have a PhD degree and you look down on somebody who only has a BA or a BS. Well, then there's something wrong with you. You should be generous. You should say, thank God I got this PhD. Thank God I got my doctorate. Thank God I'm an MD. And not look down on people as lesser, but look at people who haven't given the opportunity that you have or haven't done the work you've done to achieve it. So Chuck started Kickstart, Kick Drugs Out of America. He's now renamed it Kickstart. He's got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of kids. He has to raise millions of dollars every year to support this through his 501c3. Chuck Norris spends most of his time and energy and lots of his own money, but has to raise millions of dollars every year to keep Kickstart going, to keep these kids coming in who pay nothing. Somebody's got to pay for the uniforms. Somebody's got to pay for their belts. Somebody's got to pay the instructors in each of the schools. And he's got dozens upon dozens of schools and thousands upon thousands of students. They start them in middle school. But I would like, on my dream, fantasy built on Chuck's fantasy, is that every first grader gets a martial arts course. Because there's two things we don't do in schools that would dramatically improve our society. Number one, martial arts. And it would give employment to a lot of good people. Teachers are so underpaid, whether martial arts or otherwise, for the most part. We pay rock stars and drug users and football players and basketball players huge millions, but we don't pay our teachers appropriately. We don't pay our firemen appropriately. We don't pay our police appropriately. These are more important jobs. Teaching. So if we started the teaching in school and we taught them martial arts, that would make a huge improvement in our society in their feeling good about themselves and having less racial issues because racial issues is just plain ignorance. Some ignorant person has taught you an ignorant thought and you get your ignorant thought. So the second thing, we have poor listening skills and God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. He wants us to listen twice as much as we speak. So if we had those two classes, I think it would be astounding to people how much we'd improve because in the listening course, we would teach that we need civil discourse. If you agree with everybody around you, one of you is unnecessary and it, well, it better not be you. So we need to disagree. It's healthy to disagree. That's how we learn. But we need to be respectful. You get the respect from the martial arts training. So yes, I'm a passionate believer we should have martial arts training from the first grade on.